for as long as I can remember, my career path had already been decided for me. As a daughter of two immigrants, the only career option I had was to become a doctor, just like my aunt in Egypt. Knowing what my parents went through to get to Sweden to give me and my siblings a better life and greater opportunities than they had, I simply accepted the idea of becoming a doctor. After all, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them, right? As a kid, I had shown interest in becoming a teacher because I loved the school environment. All the colors, the learning, the reading. I was a real bookworm who thought that my teachers had the best job ever who got to stay in school their whole life. But my parents wanted the best for me, which in their perception was the profession that would give me the most salary and prestige in society. So I stuck to the dream that was given to me and the circumstances I was living in and pushed any other ambitions or desires away. And honestly, I had a hard time fantasizing about doing anything else due to the lack of role models looking like me and coming from the same background as me in any other field. I hadn't even met my aunt, but knowing we shared the same blood made me believe that if she could become a doctor, so could I. Dreaming big is one thing, but believing in your dream is something completely different. I thought that a lot of the things that I dreamt about as a kid weren't for me. I would even find myself changing my appearance in my dreams and fantasies about a better life to a less ethnic, skinnier girl with both of her parents living together. I was everything but that. My mother was a single mom with four kids, and I became like the second parent since I was the oldest. I was chubby, and all of my features were giving away that I wasn't Swedish. And the other kids at school made sure to remind me of this. Every single day. It messed with my head and made me make myself as small and invisible as possible. I excused my existence wherever I went to compensate for me not looking like everybody else around me and developed an eating disorder. My whole world revolved around fitting in in one box or another. And the food that I ate and my weight was the only thing I could control and change. I would be lying if I said that I back then was thinking about how to change this mindset. I wasn't even aware of how my environment and upbringing was affecting my self-confidence and self-image. Only much later, the small experiences, trials and errors along the way, slowly but surely, made me not only start to believe in my dreams, but also dare to try new things without having a role model do it before me. The first turning point was actually me not succeeding as much as I wished for in high school. To become a doctor, I needed to be a straight A student. All my life up to that point had been about always having straight A's. I was studying day and night and spent all the time I could doing extracurricular activities and reading as many books as possible. Of course, it wasn't all in vain, but it wasn't enough. I got straight A's in everything except for one subject, physics. I had done terribly at every single physics exam my final year to the extent that my teacher asked me how I could possibly be so stupid. <laughs> but the truth is that the body can only function on less than bare minimum for a short period of time. When you've been dealing with an eating disorder for over a decade, it's pretty hard for the brain to remember the loss of physics. And that made my final grades not being enough for medical school. I failed the one single job my parents gave me since I was born. My whole world chattered, and I felt like a huge disappointment. It took days for me to even share the, dare to share the news with my mom. But once I did, we decided to go for the second best option, according to my parents, medical engineer. Honestly, I think any profession with the word medicine in it would have been fine. <laughs> as long as she could call our relatives back in Morocco and Egypt and brag about it. But I hated it. 
I used to love math and physics, but I couldn't pick up anything from my classes. My whole body resisted even being there, but I forced myself to go every single day because I didn't want to disappoint my mother one more time. I wanted to give her something to be proud of. Sometimes we're so busy holding on so tightly for so long to a specific plan that we don't see how scratching that plan is what we need to evolve. During my second year of studying medical engineering, I got pregnant with my first daughter. And my goal was clear. I wanted to become the best possible mother to my child. And that got me thinking. Is doing things that I don't want to do and things that don't make me happy the best way to accomplish that? The answer was obvious. No. Happy mom means happy child, and I needed to be the first example to her, to inspire her onto dedicating her mind and energy to things that make her happy by doing so myself. Since my previous plan hadn't come to fruition, it had become a little bit easier for me to think about other career options. So without my parents knowing, I changed my education to become a teacher but not any teacher, leisure teacher for primary school. Because I didn't want to be the strict teacher that had to give homework, I wanted to teach by having fun with his pupils. I was so passionate about this job that everything felt easy. Even working part-time on weekend nights in the subway, I still had free time. And that was so confusing to me. I had never had spare time before. I use that spare time and return to something that I've always loved doing, baking. I usually lie and say that I've been baking all my life. I have been baking since I was a kid. As a way to enjoy sweets without having to buy the expensive stuff from stores and bakeries. With a single mom, I needed to find the cheapest and do-it-yourself ways of calming my sweet tooth. But during the years that I was sick with an eating disorder and panicking about becoming a doctor, I neither dared or had time to bake anymore. Once I started doing things for myself, such as choosing the education and career that I was truly passionate about, it created room and pleasure for baking again. The fulfilling feeling of doing something for myself just because it's fun, was new and exciting. I would use any time I had to bake. I experimented with new flavors and took any opportunity I had to bake for others. One of my friends recognized this and told me that my pastries were Insta-friendly and that I should post pictures of them on Instagram. Back then, I didn't even have Instagram, so I was unfamiliar with the term, but I took her advice and I loved it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I am an attention junkie. I love getting likes. And that made it easy to continue. This was a whole new world for me. The little bullied child inside of me was so excited with all of a sudden getting a lot of appreciation. That made me bake and post more and more, challenging myself to become better and create more attention around my pastries. When the other students in my class were having lunch break, I would run back home and take pictures and videos of the pastries that I've made the night before, then run back to class and write those recipes down. All this while I was still studying to become a teacher. Because baking on Instagram could never be a job. It has no future. A real job is Monday to Friday, nine to five. A real job is stability and working for someone else. This Instagram thing is just a hobby. A hobby that I put an immense amount of time and effort into. Besides, I had never seen any hijabi writing baking books, baking on TV, walk on the red carpet, 
or being a cover girl. So whatever. It could never be a job. It doesn't even have the word medicine in it. <laughs> Looking back, I don't understand how I could put so much time and effort and money into something that I didn't think that I could profit from as a job. Maybe it was my subconscious knowing that this could lead to something bigger, or the little dreamer inside of me still there, or maybe it was a combination of the two. By the time I graduated as a teacher, I gave birth to my second daughter. Again, I had a plan to start teaching as soon as she was ready for preschool. But not even two months after graduating, a big Swedish TV channel emailed me and asked me if I wanted to blog for their food site and even try out for their baking show. My first reaction was not being happy and excited. I was worried. <laughs> did they know what I looked like? Like, did they know that I was a hijabi? That I was North African and Muslim? Or did they just confuse me with someone else? They weren't confused, and the email was for me. I had my first meeting with them, with my youngest daughter sitting on my lap. And remember, looking into her eyes, and for once, genuinely starting to believe in that dream that I had tried to keep quiet for so long. I was ready to deviate from what I thought was the plan and dive into this opportunity. I was showing myself, but most importantly my daughters, that it is possible to pursue your dreams. With my actions, I was creating the world that I wanted my daughters and other girls like them to live in. A world where they would not hesitate for a second to believe that they could do anything they set their minds to. Thank you.